Hi, good afternoon. Welcome here to our studio, and uh, today we're going to talk some sports with Val. We didn't get a show last week, Val, so we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Mm -hmm. Whole lots of uh, lots of things going on here. Obviously, we are in the heart of the spring sports season, and um, so let's talk basketball. Okay, <laughs> why not? Let's start off with basketball. All right. Flory Badunga won Mr. Basketball on uh, Wednesday, or was it Tuesday or Wednesday? It was earlier this week. Uh, I think Flory was kind of the front runner coming into the season. It yeah. would have had to have taken an incredible year from Jack Benner to beat him, and he darn near, I think, pulled it off. I think he forced a lot of people to at least think about their vote a little bit. I voted for Flory over Jack, um, but it was pretty clear those were the two best players. I thought. Yeah. But it yeah. was it was close. I think Jack would have been worthy in a lot of many other years. Yeah. Um, well, he is going to Purdue, so I mean, you got to give him some credit there, right? So and, you know, unfortunately, we're losing Flory to Kansas, but uh, really looking forward to seeing what Jack can do at uh, Purdue. Right. I think people who saw Jack Benner play in that state championship game realized, wow, this guy is—he is a prodigious talent. And you know, again, I, there's there'll be some people who think that because Flory goes to a four A 4A school and Jack goes to a two A school, that that favored Flory. But I mean. We went Gaga for Luke Brown a couple of years ago, so I'm not sure that nece that's necessarily true. Yeah, I just think, I mean, Flory just had a massive impact, mm -hmm. and when you add in his defensive value, I think that kind of put him over the top. Again, I, I think Flory just because the name recognition, I think he had kind of a heads up coming coming into the season, and, but I mean, Jack made quite a quite a bit at it. Yeah, uh, Garrett Weiniger's Fishers boys basketball team. Uh, obviously, they won the Class 4A state championship. Garrett, a 2010 Rochester grad. They were also named the Boys Team of the Year by the Indy Star. All sports. Boys Team of the Year. Oh, wow. All sports. All sports. They lost only one game all year, and that was to Carmel, and they came back and avenged that in the sectional. What a year for that team. Uh, there were some wrestling rule changes that came out earlier this week. Um, we're still trying to figure out... Uh, there's a rule about inbounds with only one point of contact for either of either wrestler on the boundary line. That's supposedly supposed to make it easier for not only officials but also for spectators to know who's inbounds and who's out of bounds. Yeah. So we'll find out about that. Uh, a near fall, uh, as many of you know, a near fall can be either two or three points. Now they've expanded that. It can be two or three or four points or even five points. Yeah. Um, so that might take some getting used to. Four points if if the opposing wrestler's shoulders on the mat for four seconds. The five point rule was really weird because it sounds like if if the official has to call injury timeout or blood yeah. or blood time, then it could be five points. Yeah, which is going to be weird. I, it's because it sounds like you're rewarding a rewarding yeah. wrestler for making your opponent bleed. I, yeah, I'm not sure yeah. I like that, but a little uh, a little WWE esque there. Right, <laughs> but sometimes like, yeah. but sometimes you see a kid and their their shoulders are on the mat for like. 15, 20 seconds. It's not like they deserve more than three sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I don't know about the five. That, so that's, that's way to get them weird, even yeah. more points. And then the ten point, the ten foot circle at the center of the mat is now optional for mat. So we'll see. As long as there's that little rectangle in the middle where they, you know, shake hands at the start. I guess that's where that's all that matters. Hmm. We had some college signings this week. Aiden Jimenez from Winnemac is going to play football at Carroll University. That is a D three school located in Wa Waukesha, Wisconsin. Okay. Uh, Dylan Hook from Rochester is going to try for football. Yeah. And Noah Riffle of Rochester is going to Grace College for golf. And I know you'd like to hear this. Great, uh, Noah wants to major in accounting. Mm -hmm. And he said Grace's accounting program is outstanding for schools that size. And then Trey Stoll, a former Zebra alum, and I, I think uh -huh. that's going to be a perfect fit for Noah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I, I can't say anything but good about Grace's uh, whole program, but, yeah, the, definitely their business and accounting program. You know, my oldest daughter, Madeline, graduated from there with an accounting degree, and mm -hmm. she's been doing really good. So, mm -hmm. yep. And we wanted to just uh, give a shout-out to the friends and family of Carol Calloway, who passed away on April 15th at the age of 80. She was a legendary English teacher at Rochester High School. I mean, taught 38 years there. She was also a legendary sports fan, and that's why I wanted to mention her. I mean, she was as huge of a supporter of girl sports um, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. She was a huge Sheila McMillan fan. She was a huge Notre Dame women's basketball fan on top of that. So I just wanted to give a shout out. I mean, there are many, if you're watching this program, there's a very good chance that Carol Calloway taught you, and I wanted to give uh, uh, our respects to her and her family. Definitely. 
Um, I also wanted to give a um, quick shout out to Addison Zimpleman who um, received the uh, the Lily Scholarship for Fulton County. Yeah, uh, Wes Steininger had originally got got that award, but uh, he's going to be going out of state. He's doing an ROT scholarship mm-hmm. at uh, Vanderbilt. So mm-hmm. congratulations to him on that. That's huge. Yeah. Uh, and so Addison Zimpleman is going to be uh, taking the Fulton County Lily Scholarship. Uh, so congratulations to Addison and, you know, just uh, part of that whole group of seniors there at Caston that uh, has really made a huge difference on the culture of the Caston uh, schools, not only what she does athletically, but also what she does academically, obviously. Yeah. And um, also Alex Deming, uh, he's going mm-hmm. to the Citadel on an ROTC scholarship. Yeah. So. Man, that is that's some big stuff. Yeah, uh, I saw him at the prom. I just said, man, congr- congratulations! That's that's big. So he's he's getting to do what uh, what we knew he wanted to do. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's pretty awesome mm-hmm. as well. And Addison, of course, going to Purdue Fort Wayne. Yeah, she's yeah. gonna play softball there. But of course, I mean, the the Lily kind of trumps the athletic scholarship. Yeah, yeah. So let's uh, let's get into some sports here. We had a lot of stuff going on. We've got uh, softball and baseball for the Rochester Zebras to talk about here first. So uh, you want to start off with the softball team? Yeah, let's talk about the Rochester softball team. They're five and seven overall. They're one and two in TRC play so far. Um, since we talked to you last two weeks ago, they lost to Eastern, lost to Southwood, lost to John Glenn, a heartbreaker, thirteen to eleven last week. Uh, but then they defeated uh, Twin Lakes and Northfield. Twin Lakes thirteen to nothing in five innings. Northfield fourteen to nothing in five innings. Here's some highlights of the Northfield game. And again, Rochester scored uh, seven runs in the second inning in this game. They built up an eight nothing lead, and an eight run lead with Bria Rensberger in the circle was pretty comfortable. And again, Rochester again not they don't maybe quite have the power that they had maybe with an Emma Howdeshell and a Sid Hawes in previous years, but they, they've definitely been making more contact of late. You know, the, the big story for uh, all of our sports for this spring is, uh, has been the weather. I mean, it's yeah. just seems like it's either raining or it's going to rain. I haven't, yeah. uh, haven't had a whole lot of great weather for uh, for our sports, but we're able to get a couple games in this week, so that was a, a good thing there. And yeah, you can see here the the bottom of the second, uh, pretty good inning for the uh, Lady Z's. Right, and I mean, you know, Bria Rensberger has not only picked up her, obviously her pitching has been consistent on the start, but she's starting to hit better. She had two doubles in this Northfield game. And remember, this was after they beat Twin Lakes 13 to nothing at Twin Lakes. So I think Bria threw a no-hitter against Twin Lakes. She threw a two-hitter against Northfield. Um, again, we've seen Micaiah Harding. She's She's been hitting to the point where she's got to be in the lineup now. And, I mean, uh, and then, you know, Miley Hines has been consistent all year. Aubrey Wilson has been consistent all year. Uh, yeah, this, this you know, they, they, they'd been really playing well in those two games, and then they ran into Manchester on Wednesday. Boy, Manchester softball and baseball are doing well in the early part of the uh, TRC right, season. Both right. of them sitting with uh, two no marks. Right. They, you know, they they took a one nothing lead on that, uh, and then this was a sacrifice. Well, that was actually a nice catch by uh, Braylon Hunter out in left field, but it was a sacrifice fly that made it two to nothing. Um, bottom six, Rochester still down by two. And is this going to be the plate? Yeah, that's the plate. The plate. The score at the, the score at the time was not two to nothing. It was actually two to one, and that was a base hit by Harding. But Bria Rensberg is thrown out at the plate by Ali Egolf, the center fielder. So it stayed at two to one, and that turn. And then Manchester winds up scoring four in the top of the seventh. Um, the big hit in that inning was a two-run triple by the shortstop Paxton Baker. I think we're going to see it. Are we going to see it here? Yeah, this is a big triple to right center field. It goes all the way to the fence, and of course the runners were moving with two outs, so two runs score. And that wound up making it 5-1, to one, and she would later come in and score in an infield single to make it 6-1. to one. You 
Yeah, okay, here's the infield hit. Nice stop by Wilson. Just couldn't quite get it there in time, deep in the hole. And that made it 6-1. to one. Baker was huge, both offensively and defensively. She was the best defensive shortstop I've seen this year. Hmm. I mean, she was... I mean, she had a quick first step to anything, and she had a real strong, accurate arm. Rochester's made it 6-2 to two in the bottom of the seventh. Wilson gets hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. That makes it 6-2. to two. And so Coach Todd Volk would make a pitching change. That would be all for Molly Shanup. He went with Egolf, brought her in from center field. Allie Egolf threw one pitch. She threw it to Braylon Hunter. Braylon hit a line drive right at the third baseman, Hadley West, who caught the ball and touched third base. Double Doubled, play. Doubled her up. Double play, game over. Bad luck. Braylon hit the snot out of the ball, but just right at him. Mm-hmm. That was just a kind of a frustrating win and a frustrating game. Manchester won six to two. Yep. So Rochester, they are at Bremen today. Bremen's ranked number five in Class Two A. They are at Jim Town at the Jim Town tournament uh, on Saturday. They'll play Jim Town and Bremen in pool play. If they win both games, they get a third game, in the ch- which would be the championship game. Is it Bremen? I thought they were playing Peru. Uh, Jim Town and Peru yeah. in the Jim Town tournament. Yeah. And if they win those two games, then they get... Sorry, did I say Bremen? Yeah. Jimtown and Peru. If they win those two, then they get a third game, which would be the championship game. Uh, it's a six-team tournament. I think it's Leo, Brandywine, and South Bend Adams, one of those three. Okay. would be the championship game. Of course, Leo, a powerhouse program every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we'll see if, if they wind up playing Leo. Uh, Jimtown having a very good year as well. Then uh, Rochester returns to TRC play. They host Wabash on Monday. Of course, Wabash, both a conference and a sectional opponent. Uh, then they host Plymouth on Tuesday. That's a makeup game. They host McConaughey on Wednesday. And then they're at Valley next Friday. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a big week for them. And, you know, as you look down the TRC, uh, you know, right now, Rochester's sitting at 1 and 2. You got Manchester. Uh, they're actually 3 and 0, oh, and Southwood 2 and 0. Oh. You got Mac and Whitco and Lewis Cass all at two and one, so they they might have dug themselves into a little bit deeper of a hole than they can dig out of for this year. But uh, they've got to uh, find a way. You know, they got a young Wabash team coming in on Monday that uh, you know they've got a a really good freshman uh, in Andy Conliff who's mm-hmm. uh, got to shave Coach uh, Stan Bazzi's head after hitting a couple home runs in a game oh, earlier okay. last week. So uh, you know we'll get to see what uh, what they can do there, but uh, you know a couple a couple of teams that uh, they can get wins over, but they they've got to find a way to do that. It's right. gonna be a geez, that's a lot of games over the next seven days. Yeah, and R- Rochester's got to tighten up that defense too. I think they had four errors in that Manchester game. The uh, cannot I mean again with Bria's pitching, I don't know she she doesn't need a ton of help from the defense, but she does need some. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aubrey Miller's not playing right field. Braylon Hunter's playing left field, which is a little bit of a change from earlier in the year, both those two and then with Dara Strasser in center. I think outfield defense is going to be a strength. Aubrey Miller made a couple nice plays in right field against Manchester. Yeah, kind of back to where she played last year. Yeah. A little bit more of a feel for her there. Yeah. 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 All right. um, Let's take a quick break here before we get into some Rochester baseball here. When we come back, we'll uh, talk some more sports with Val. Stop on by to In Your Hardware for all your home project needs. With a broad selection of garden supplies, tools, and paints featuring brands like Milwaukee, Diablo, and their newest paint line Valspar, you can be sure that Inyards will supply you with the most top-rated equipment. And if you need something for a quick job, check out Inyards Rental Selection to get you going. Stop on in at 1619 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574-223-4920 to see how Inyards' friendly staff can help you. Pacesetters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're looking to buy a home or you're looking to sell, Pacesetters Real Estate is here for you. Call 574-223-5000 or visit us online at www.pacesettersre.net. At First Federal Savings Bank, you can bank on the go. With the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app, you can check account balances, transfer money, view account history, deposit your checks, and pay your bills. If you want your mobile banking done easy, download the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app today. The app is available for both Apple and Android phones and tablets. Just type in First Federal Savings Bank in the search bar and look for the white star with the green background.
There are some things in life you just can't plan for. But here at Evans Agency, we strive to help you have all your bases covered when it comes to protecting your assets from whatever life throws your way. Whether it's home, business, auto, or life, Evans Agency has got you covered. With a heart and hand for friendship, Evans Agency has been serving the community for 20 years. Call 574-224-6988 or visit online at www.evansagencyllc.com. Welcome back here talking sports with Val. Let's talk some Rochester Zebras baseball, Val. Uh, a little bit of a tough week here for the for the Zebras as they get yeah. into TRC play. They're uh, they're sitting with a one and two mark in in the conference as well as the uh, softball team. So again, uh, some big games coming up. They got a, a really big game coming up on Monday with Wabash. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, obviously conference and sectional opponent for for them there and sectional host as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, again, the way they were playing, you know, they had that crazy game against Caston uh, back on Saturday, April thirteenth. They were down six to four with two outs in the seventh inning, scored six runs. To come back and win that game. Then they beat Delphi, great win. Then they beat Southwood, they beat Pioneer. Then this loss to Northfield, and again they get off to a good start. They were up um, two to nothing in this game. Um, that was a nice play to turn a force play and a bunt by Carson Pollock. This was a bloop double to right field by Brady Coleman. That would give Rochester a one to nothing lead. And then this would be a line drive base hit to left by Carson Pollock. That would score Coleman. Rochester up two to nothing. So again, off to a good start in this game. But the top of the third is when the momentum started to shift. Pollock got the first two batters out, but Northfield came back and scored three times. And this was uh, uh, Hoppert, who was the real star for Northfield in this game. He had, he had three hits. I think he went three for three. That was a two-run single that tied the game. And there was a throwing error on a steal attempt by Jake Seifer, and Northfield would score the go-ahead run and take a 3-2 to two lead. Rochester would tie the game in the bottom of the fourth. I think it was at, an, was at the catch by uh, in center field by uh, McKellip from Northfield. I believe that was. Top six. We're tied at three. Runner at third and one out. There's a wild pitch. Cypher can't locate it right away, and the go-ahead run scores. It gives Northfield a 4-3 to three lead. But in the bottom of the sixth, the Zebras would tie it when Jake Cypher would get hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. And that was with two outs as well. But then top of the seventh, Northfield... They would knock Pollock out of the game. It looked like Carson was leaving a few pitches up in the strike zone. He'd be getting a little tired there. And Northfield would go on and uh, yeah, that that made it six to four. And then you're going to see a two-run single here. I think this was uh, third baseman. Uh, for Northfield, who had that big two-run single. That put them up 8-4. to four. They would tack on another run to go up 9-4. So, again, you see the final score 9-4. to four. It makes it seem kind of lopsided. But this was this was a nail-biter basically the whole way until Northfield scored those five in the top of the seventh. And then uh, Brandon McKillop shut, out, right, shut down Rochester. He came in with, in 16 innings, he had struck out 37. And hmm. he had three Ks in an inning and a third in this game. But the big out, the one big out they got, and we was the getting their force out on the ball. Gavin Young hit um, to win the bottom of the sixth inning in a tie game. 
Okay, this was the Manchester game, and again, Rochester gets off to a great start. Two-run homer by Cypher, and Rochester leads 2 to nothing in the bottom of the first. So again, this was... Again, Manchester came in 2-0, and and Rochester came in 1-1, and so Rochester knew if they win this game, they're, they're back even with Manchester in the standings. They're taking on Harper Sturtzman, who's a freshman on the mound. They would take a 3-0 lead in the second. I think they're, and so again they're they're looking pretty pretty good, but then two outs in the bottom, in the top of the third, and the whole momentum of the game changes. Manchester would score six times off Tanner Reinerts. I think there were, I think there was a bases loaded walk and a bases loaded hit batter in all this. I think it was even a run scoring wild pitch, so and Tanner struggled with his control a little bit in this game. And especially in this inning. And again, all six runs scored with two outs. Yeah, there's the wild pitch that brought in the sixth run of the inning. So I made it six to three. Bottom of the fourth, and this would be a home run to deep left center field. That was Colton Fervita, and Rochester would get it down to 6-4 on that solo shot. And that's two home runs this year for Ferv. And then we get it to 6-5 on an RBI double by Coleman later in the inning. But boy, you have to credit the, fr the freshman pitcher, Sturtzman. I mean, he, he really buckled down after this. And Manchester kept adding to the lead. Again, this had to have been a sweet win for Manchester. Rochester played Manchester twice last year, and Rochester outscored them 37 to two in two games, 20 to nothing in conference play, and we we did the sexual game, which was 17 to two. So this is a Manchester team that has made huge strides. They are 12 two and one this season. Yeah, yeah. The most most important part of that is they're three and zero in the conference. And they're three and zero in the conference, setting up there with uh, Peru, both and, setting at three and zero. And Peru and Manchester play each other on Monday. That's yeah. a big game. Yeah. And we'll see. I mean, again. Rochester did not see McKillop, who was Northfield's ace, until the sixth inning of that game, and they didn't see Evan Martinovitz at all. He's Manchester's ace because mm -hmm. they were they're saving him for because he had just pitched against Wabash on Monday, and they're saving yeah, him for the Peru game. Peru game next Monday. So again, uh, just a disappointing loss for the Zebras. Um, you know, there, there have been some defensive issues a little bit, some guys. Making errors that you wouldn't expect to make errors, to be honest, and it's just been kind of, it's been, you can tell the team's getting a little bit frustrated out there. Uh, we'll see if they can, uh, again, it, they just need to kind of tighten up their game, I think, more than anything. I don't think, I don't think there's anything really wrong with them offensively. They just need to tighten up the mistakes and force the other team to earn what they get. Yeah. Well, we've we've seen this team kind of have uh, you know issues here and there over the last few years, and and it seems like you know mm -hmm. the the leadership of the team and the coaching staff uh, have been able to kind of put things together and and find a way to kind of get a good stretch going towards the end of the season. Yeah. So we'll find out you know where where this team is. I mean they've they've like the softball team kind of dug themselves into a hole in the conference, and you know it's going to be a hard one to dig out of. But they've. They've got a big one coming up on uh, on Monday. They've right. got to beat Wabash right. at home. Of course, they've got a very good opponent tonight when they travel to Carroll. Yeah. Carroll's lost only two games all year, one to Western, and Western's lost only one game all year. Right. And they lost at, you know, to a 4A team in Harrison. Um, then at Wabash Monday, as we mentioned, or excuse me, home with Wabash on Monday. That'll be at Bob Copeland on, uh, on Monday. They'll probably get Tate, who was the star, the ace pitcher for the Apaches, Jason Tate. <laughs> And then they host McConaughey on Wednesday. McConaughey really struggling, 0-3 in the conference. Can't buy a close win. And then, of course, Ad Valley next Friday. Yeah. Uh, girls tennis, uh, 
doing pretty good. Three and one in the conference, seven and three overall. Right. It's looking like it's looking like the Manchester Lady Squires are kind of up yeah, here, yeah, and everybody yeah. else is kind of chasing. That's their one conference loss. I mean, they bounce back and get a nice uh, win over Wabash, one four to one at Wabash on Wednesday. I mean, they, you know, the, the, their other two losses this year were to uh, Valley and to Triton. But they also, you know, they beat Peru, which was a big deal, I think, for all those kids. Yeah. For Coach for Coach Pollock, I knew, I know it was a big win as well. They beat Whitco, and they're what, what a three-two nail biter. Um, they've changed the lineup. Just they, they, you know, they're they're at North Judson today, which is a sectional opponent. So that's kind of a big one. And then they host a really nice Lewis Cass team on Monday. I can't remember the last time Rochester played Lewis Cass in girls tennis. I mean, this might be the first. Well, they have to now. You know, they have to yeah. now, and then at Northfield on Thursday, but. They made a slight lineup change. Audrey Bollinger has gone from two from one doubles to two singles, mm -hmm. and Taylor Howard's gone from two singles to one doubles. So it's yeah. Taylor and Chloe Nichols are teamed together at one doubles, and Audrey won her first match as a two singles player. I heard she looked pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I know Coach Coach Pollock has raved about the work that Aud Audrey's put in, and mm -hmm. with Ella and Audrey and Riley Clevenger, I mean, the, you know, it's a pretty pretty solid singles lineup. Yeah, yeah. Nice thing is they'll all be back too. Right. Yeah, so mm -hmm. golf team continues to put up some good scores as well. Really good scores, you know. They, you know they finished twelfth at the Don Dickin Classic. That was at Stonehenge, a uh, three sixty, not a bad score uh, on that course. It was really w the course was soggy still that mm -hmm. day, mm -hmm. and again the field in that tournament was really good. Uh, but the, you know they, they beat Winnemac and Culver in a three way match. Um, you know they beat Wabash and Peru in a three way match. And then they went to the Logansport invite last Saturday, shot a 330 at Dykeman Park. Finished in third place. Lewis Cass, 328. Logansport, 330. Rochester, 330. Logansport got second based on fifth player tiebreak. Mm -hmm. But still Rochester in third. And then LCC was 331. So really tight, those top four teams. Mm -hmm. um, but again, Noah Riffle's been playing great golf. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you know this week they beat North, North Miami and Peru, shot a 163 at uh, Peru Municipal on. Wednesday, and then a huge win over Northfield, 157 to 168 uh, on Thursday. I wrote about that. Um, again, the, the Northfield is a two-time defending TRC champion. And they've got Tyson Bear, who's the reigning TRC medalist, reigning Warsaw sectional medalist. And Noah shot a 30, Bear shot a 36, but Noah shot a 36. I mean, he was right there with them. Mm -hmm. um, and how about Davis Reaney shot a 38? Yeah. Yeah, and you know it was again. You can read kind of about Davis's evolution as a golfer, but he he said he never took golf seriously until spring break 2023, and they were in, so a little over a year ago. They were in Florida. Mm -hmm. Hey, why don't you why don't you come out for a round of golf? Yeah, and he said he played golf, and he said he just he loved it. He just he said he spent all he said basically from the time the beginning of the summer all the way through the start of basketball season, he just golf, golf, golf. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Reese was always, you know, he was always a golfer mm -hmm. right, since he was little, and Davis really was never into it. And yeah, uh, it's amazing how far he has come in, in just a, a little over a year. So yeah, yeah, he, it's impressive. Yeah, and uh, he said, you know, that he said that Noah and Jerry McLaughlin can kind of they can see him on the driving range and say, hey, why don't you try this? And they can kind of fix him if there's anything wrong with his swing. And yeah, I mean, the, with Noah and Jr. and Davis, I mean, that's a really good top three. And then Isaac Heishman shot a forty-two. Against Northfield, so he's been improving a lot. You know, Ashton Musselman is holding on that five spot for, for right now. I mean, and, and playing well. I mean, he's been the, the five spot all season. So, yeah, uh, you know, this is a this is a really good team. Again, Northfield's got a win over Lewis Cass in a nine hole match. Lewis Cass has beaten Rochester twice. So, you think it's going to be a three team race when we get to that TRC tournament coming up on May 11th at Rock Hollow? Yeah. All right, uh, track, big day for uh, McKenna Jackson on Saturday. Set a new school record in the pole vault, 9 foot 7. That's, 9 uh, 7, and that was not good weather. Oh, no, <laughs> not at all. And it was, and on the end, it was, I mean, it was really windy on yeah. top of that. You yeah. would think uh, really windy weather would be good. So McKenna, that, that's the second time McKenna's gone over 9 feet this year already. Yeah. So 9 7 broke Ashley Minnick's school record of 9 6. She's Ashley Meadows now. Uh, and Allison Calloway was second in the 3,200 and third in the 1,600. How about Brooklyn Chandler, fourth in the, the 3,200? She, she got her time down to 13.09. She's lopped a minute off her time just this year. Wow. <laughs> in that in that event. Um, Taylor Navarro was third in the 800 meters. Ashlyn Wayant was sixth in the discus and eighth in the shot put. Again, these, these are mostly like 4A schools mm -hmm. that are competing with Rochester. Mm -hmm. um, 
Audrey Wagner was 7th in the 100. Isabel Dunwoody tied for 7th in the high jump. On the boys' side, uh, the boys, again, the girls were 8th out of 9 teams. The boys were 5th out of 9 teams. Trevor Wally won the pole vault with 11 feet. Gage Zimpleman was 3rd in the pole vault, 10 feet. Uh, Mason Heisey was 2nd in the discus. What was interesting was his throw, 145.5. It's been a while since we've had a Rochester thrower throw the discus 145. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've had a lot of good shot putters. I don't know if we've had quite the discus. I mean, Marshall Fishback was probably a little better in the shot than the discus. Mm-hmm. 145.5 would have won the Plymouth sectional last year. Yeah, It would have won conference. So let's keep an eye on Mason and what kind of year he has. Um, Bryce Bogger, what a year he's had. Third in the long jump, 196. So, I mean, he's going to be a contender when we get to Plymouth. Fourth in the high jump as well, five feet six. Grant Bailey, third in the sixteen hundred meters at four forty two. That's fast. And uh, Harrison Dunwoody was third in the one ten hurdles. Xavier Vance is back. He was eighth in the shot put, uh, thirty nine five and three quarters. The four by eight hundred relay team was fourth with Grant Bailey, Reese Johnson, Lane Shank, and Lincoln Holder. And uh, they go. To, they travel to Tipton today for the Tipton invite. And then they have that three way home meet with Valley and Triton on uh, Tuesday. That's typically kind of like a JV type of meet. Because, again, what do they have next Friday? Conference at Wabash. So you don't want to work kids too hard at that Valley and Triton meet. Okay. But, yeah, conference coming up next Friday at Wabash. Awesome. All right, that'll do it for uh, Rochester. We'll take a quick break, come back, and uh, talk some more sports with Val as we talk some Argus Dragons here on the next segment. Kriskin's Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. With a wide selection to choose from, Kriskin's is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need, no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services, visit kriskinspoolsandspas.com, call 574-857-3100, or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Kriskin's can help you. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. Spray foam is not only going to seal up the structure, but it's doing that insulation at the same time. So with a seamless application with the spray foam, you get all of that. You get your air barrier, you get your insulation, and obviously with, with one of the products, you get a vapor barrier as well. Hi, I'm Ashley Samsel with the Insulation Guys. And I'm Kyle Hoover. Let us be your solution to modern energy efficiency. Now more than ever, your business needs fast and reliable internet. Whether you're hosting a meeting, printing invoices, or keeping inventory, your business deserves the best internet speeds to keep everything running smoothly. And to get the best speeds, you need a fiber connection. Here at RTC, we have the solution for you. Contact me, Steve Stricker, to see how we can best serve you, or you can also visit us online at rtc1.com. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val. Let's uh, talk some Argus Dragons, some softball and baseball here for the uh, Dragons. Argus softball <laughs> off to a three and seven start. They're zero and two in conference play. Um, you know they had that doubleheader sweep of River Forest, and they also had a win- nice win over Lavelle. They also lost a two game series to Alcard Christian, which gets them off on the wrong foot in conference play. And then they had a kind of a tough loss to Peru. They were up two to nothing going into the bottom of the sixth, and then Peru scored. Uh, excuse me, bottom of the fourth. They're up two to nothing, and then Peru scored fourteen runs hmm. and lost fourteen to two in five innings. Um, they get a home game with Winnemac today, a home game with Pioneer on Monday. They're at Valley on Wednesday, and they host Oregon Davis next Friday. Uh, so uh, again, you know the Stackhouse sisters have been in keeping them competitive, but uh, you know again Pioneer or Peru had that big rally. So let's see how they bounce back against Winnemac and Pioneer coming up. Um, Argus Baseball is 0-12 on the year. They are 0-4 in conference play. They're done with conference play. They only play four conference games. Mm-hmm. There's only two other teams in the conference with baseball teams, Bethany Christian and Elkhart Christian. Um, they lost both of the Bethany Christian games. They lost to Coutts. Um, 
They lost three games to Elkhart Christian. One of them, I think, was a non-conference game. And just a heartbreaker of a loss to South Bend Washington last night at mm-hmm. South Bend Washington. They're losing a walk-off wild pitch in the bottom of the 11th, 7-6. to six. Yeah, yeah, in the 11th. Yeah. So a few extra innings there. I, I saw it. Uh, I saw the uh, clip of that one. That's, yeah. uh, that's a tough one there. Is trying to find a way to get a win there and just uh, – you know, right and rough way to go. Right, I mean, Argus was down five to two in that game, came back to tie it, and so they were uh, scored. They scored one in the top of the ninth to go up six to five. So you know, you know, and then South Bend Washington comes back with one in the bottom of the ninth so yeah. to keep the game going. Mm-hmm. So it was six six, and then South Bend Washington pulled it out. Uh, again, Argus is at Culver Academy on Saturday. They are at Valley on Monday, and they're at a very good Peru team next Friday. And, of course, we should mention Brian Jennings is the new girls basketball coach at Argus. I don't think yeah. I mentioned it yeah. on this show. Keeping uh, keeping that one in the family there is uh, Brian is going to take over for his older brother, Scott, yeah. next year. So uh, as they, uh, you know, we talked about uh, this a lot, but obviously as they join the Hoosier North Conference, so they're going to be playing in a, in a new conference. Uh, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see, you know, obviously graduating – Samantha Redinger and Elisa Sarber, so a little bit of a rebuild there as uh, Brian takes over for for Scott. So, yeah, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Let's move on to Cast, and they are their softball team is ten and three overall. They are two and zero oh in the conference play. Um, they split those two games with Peru uh, a couple of weeks ago. The Peru, the second game is more like a uh, coach. Burks wanted to give some JV kids some action. Mm-hmm. I, I think Peru took that game a lot more seriously than Caston did. Yeah. Uh, then they defeated North White. They defeated North Judson 13-2. to That got them a 2-0 and in the conference. They defeated Northfield. And then they went 2-0 and and finished in third place out of eight teams at the Kokomo Tournament last weekend. They beat Westfield 9-7 to on Friday night. They were up 8 nothing and were able to hold on late. Uh, then they lost to South Bend St. Joe 19 to 3 in 5 innings on in their first game on Saturday and they defeated Kokomo 10 to 9 in their second game uh on Saturday. I, I finally got to experience the Kokomo softball feel like you had told me it was everything you said it was. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> it is. And given that it was 47 yeah. degrees outside it was the press box was nice and cozy, warm and inviting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but that, just an awesome stadium. I mean, that's that's right up there with Bittinger Stadium at Purdue. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was yeah. Obviously, that's probably the best that we've been to, but that's also a uh, Division 1 college stadium versus right. a uh, high school stadium. Yeah, this was a really nice. I mean, they put a lot of thought into kind of how they built the stadium and it's uh yeah, just a really nice facility. South Bend St. Joe is awesome. I mean, the Zakay sisters, Riley and Berkeley are just tremendous. I mean, uh, you didn't get to see Berkeley pitch. They had the freshman pitch the, against Cast, and they see Berkeley's the key for the championship game against Belmont, and she wound up pitching a perfect game hmm. with 19 strikeouts against Belmont. Yeah, Berkeley's the key, and she's also a really, really good hitter. And her sister's a really, really good hitter. And they've got a a leadoff hitter named Mary Stack who had two triples, and she was really, really fast. So. There are just no weaknesses on that team. Yeah. But what impressed me was how Caston bounced back to beat Kokomo 10-9 to in the third-place game on the JV field uh, later in the day. I mean, Addison Zimpleman, as many of you saw, got nailed in the thigh by a line drive. She wore like a, like a football thigh pad. Yeah. It didn't affect her th- hitting at all. She had two doubles against St. Joe, and then she had, a, I think, two or three hits against Kokomo, including a homer. But, I mean, that couldn't have felt good, especially in that weather. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and then, you know, I mean, Macy Hinderleiter, who hasn't done much pitching, and she kind of admitted, I throw one pitch, it's a fastball. But, I mean, the you know, just kind of, you know, she, first of all, she hits a, a two-run homer to get the rally started, and then comes in and pitches and gets, you know, some big outs there in the seventh inning, up 10-8. to eight. She allows a run but gets the third out and hangs on to win a 10-9. to nine. So just really impressive. Kylie Logan had been 0 for 6 on the day and then hits a three run homer. I mean that was just I mean it just tells you about these girls and what kind of what kind of competitors they are. Yeah. And that was really impressive. Um then they lost to West Central on Monday. Uh, I think we have some highlights from that one. Yeah, I was down there on Monday and uh unfortunately West Central did a lot of damage before they even got an out. Um, yeah, it was 4 to nothing. Uh, top of the first they yeah. get three runs before Caston even gets an out. Um, 
you know, kind of kind of dug themselves into a, a bit of a hole. Obviously, senior night. I don't know if the emotions were were you know kind of running high or whatever. Herb, the pitcher, gets a uh, two run double there, and uh, three nothing there. They finally do get an out, uh, get another hit, get another run across here, four nothing in the top of the first. So, pretty good hole for. Caston, um, Addison Zippelman, the first pitch at the bottom of the first, yeah. hits hits it out and uh, cuts that lead to three again. But from what I've seen, Addison, as good of a hitter as she's been, she's gotten even better. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, she is very aggressive. If you just try and just throw a get me over strike one, uh, you're not going to get a strike two because it's going to be over everybody's head. That one gets through the gap there. Uh, mm-hmm. No runs in the uh, second inning. Get one across there in the top of the third. So that makes it 5-1, to one, West Central. This is uh, Kylie Logan in the bottom of the third, and she's going to hit one across the fence. So Yeah, and that was after she had hit one against Kokomo. So back to a, a three-run advantage is uh, bottom of the third. This is kind of an interesting situation. The catcher thought that uh, um, there was a swing there and was trying to figure out what was going on, get, trying to get uh, a call from the ump, and uh, Isabel Scales alertly steals third. Mm-hmm. The throw down to third is errant, and uh, basically they manufactured a run out of that. Uh, uh, the catcher, you know, and, and there was some confusion there. But no timeout was called, and, and Isabel just did uh, you know smart senior play. Tough one there. The freshman, Maddie Douglas, can't make the catch, and one run will score. They do get the out at second, almost double up uh, there at third, but uh, the run scores makes it 6-3 uh, in the uh, sixth inning. So, you know, West Central, after that first inning, they did get a couple more runs, and, uh, again, there's the senior uh, IPFW commit, or Purdue Fort Wayne PFW commit, mm-hmm. Addison Zimpleman with her second dinger of the day. Uh, second time she hit the first pitch out. Uh, just yeah. Unfortunately, there was, wasn't anybody on base. She yeah. was a leadoff hitter. And I mean, the home run she had against Kokomo was on the first pitch of the at-bat as well. Was it really? Yeah. So, unfortunately, senior night doesn't go the way that the Lady Comets would like. 6-4, West Central gets the win, but you got to take a little bit of perspective, obviously, coming off of those three huge games on Saturday, Friday, Saturday, mm-hmm. for uh, for Caston and, and playing a, a game against a very good uh, right. sectional West, opponent. West Central threw their number one pitcher, Herb, and mm-hmm. Caston did not. No, they did. Or Zimmelman Addison did, pitched. Did pitch. okay. She pitched the whole game. Okay. Yeah, so, so, so. Sorry about that. Yeah, but um, – it was, uh, you know, it was just one of those things. It was just a, a tough top of the first for mm-hmm. the Comets, and unfortunately they just weren't ever able to uh, to quite catch up to them. And, yeah, I think there's still a lot of uh, optimism uh, conference-wise. Uh, they're sitting right there. You know, they, they've they got some uh, some big games to go. They're only 2-0 in conference play. you got Pioneer sitting at 4-0. and um, And Knox, even though they've only played one game, but they're 1-0, and but... You know, Winnemac is always a tough mm-hmm. challenge for Casson, so they still have Cat, uh, Winnemac and, and that Pioneer game coming up at the end of the year. And Knox has a very good pitcher in Barnes. I mean, she's she's a very good pitcher. She beat Valley the other day, so I think Knox is gonna they're gonna have something to say about this before it's over. Yeah, but Casson did bounce back with a six to four win over North Miami uh, last night. I was at that game uh, again. They scored two in the first, both runs unearned. They scored three in the second, all three runs unearned. And all five of those runs came with two outs. Some clutch hitting by Hinderleiter at a two-run single and by Scales with a two-run single. Scales isn't quite hitting for the power maybe that we've been accustomed to, but she's getting on base all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't think there's anything really to be uh, upset about there. I mean, Isabel is Isabel uh, again. And then, uh, you know, Hinderleiter has been moved uh, moved around the lineup. She said she doesn't really care where she is. She's gone from first to ninth to fifth in the lineup. You know, it looks like Maddie Douglas can play either second base or right field. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Miley Rude, who's pl- playing some good left field defensively mm-hmm. uh, for them. Uh, made a couple of nice catches against 
Kokomo made a couple of nice catches against North Miami. And then, uh, you know, it was kind of a strange situation in the sixth inning. I mean, Zimbelman drops a pop-up and scales boots a grounder on consecutive batters. And we were like, what is going on here? But Warner gets out. She, she does allow an under and run in that inning, but gets out. Of, that could have been a really bad inning, you know, but Warner, Natalie Warner did a really nice job last night. She just mm-hmm. kept her composure and just kept pitching through it. Yeah. And, you know, young, obviously freshman, but, uh, and I don't know that she's pitched a ton, has she? Uh, Not really, no. Yeah. So uh, doing doing a pretty good job, and, you know, she made some good contact in that game that I did on uh, Monday against West Central. Just yeah. unfortunately hit right to the left fielder about three times. Yeah. But uh, she, she, right. uh, she she's going to be a good one. So there's some defensive miscues in the game, but there were some good defensive plays, too. Finky threw out a runner at second base trying to stretch a single into a double. And then uh, when Hackworth, who is North Miami's really fast leadoff hitter, she gets on base to start off the top of the seventh, and then Logan – on the next first bet, next batter, Logan throws behind her at first base, and they pick her off, get her in a rundown, and tag her out. That was a huge play. Yeah. They have a big game coming up on Monday. I'll be down there for that one as they host Tipkinu Valley. So uh, that'll be a, a fun one there, Valley at uh, Caston then on Monday. so um, Right. I mean, yeah. first a conference game at LaVille tonight, but then that Valley game on Monday, and then at Manchester on Tuesday, which would be an interesting game. Mm-hmm. They get Molly, if they get Molly Shannon from Manchester – we saw what Shannon's game plan was against Rochester. In on the hands, in on the hands, in on the hands. Mm-hmm. And, again, that's the similar to kind of the game plan that Ashley Sumter Music of North Miami had. Get in on the hands and try to jam cast and hitters. They struggle a little bit with that. So let's see how they adjust. Yeah. And then at Logansport on Thursday, whether it's Packard or Haggerty, they're going to get a good pitcher. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, let's talk a little cast in baseball here. Four and seven overall, three and two in conference play. They had that heartbreaking loss to Rochester where they were two outs in the seventh, but really bounced back, swept Triton in a two-game set. Uh, they lost to Peru 8-2. to two. That was a pretty close game, though, until about the sixth inning. Uh, they split a two-game series with North Judson last week, so that got them to 3-1 uh, and one in the conference. Uh, but then they lost to LaVille last night to drop to 3-2. and two. That was a combined no-hitter by Lucas Plummer and Andrew Wolford. Plummer pitched the first six innings, struck out 11, and then Wolford pitched the seventh. Hmm. Uh, Laville won that game two to nothing. Pete Duvall was really, really good, but Laville pitcher is just a little bit better. Mm-hmm. So now three and two in conference. Um, game two of the Laville series is tonight at Caston. Then they travel to Winnemac on Monday for the first game of a two game. So then Winnemac travels to Caston on Tuesday. That's going to be a big one because if Caston can sweep that, they're right back in the race. It's really looking right now like it's Laville's conference to lose mm-hmm. with the way they've been playing. But, again, that cast and Winnemag series is going to be huge. If they split, it's, it might be bad for both teams. But let's see if one But if one can sweep the other, then it could be more consequential. Yeah, two, two losses in the H-NAC for baseball is different than two losses in the TRC because you play each team twice. Right, and you play so, 14 conference games. Yeah, so. yeah, a lot more opportunity there. So you're not out of it with two losses necessarily. Yeah, and then they are at Northfield on Thursday, and that Northfield team will see – whether it's Lemming or McKillop, they'll, uh, we'll see if, if Northfield throws one of those two. But uh, it's a, a quality Northfield team. I was impressed by what I saw, and they've been ranked in the top ten in, in 1A. And of course, Northfield is a sectional opponent as well for Caston. Yep. Uh, some golf notes? Yeah, they finished in 16th place of the Logan Sport invite with a 424. I just wanted to give a shout-out to the new coach, Jeremy Rentschler. got eight kids to come out for golf, which is big news. Uh, obviously, they lost their top two players from last year's team, A.J. Daig, who was the conference medalist, and Colby Pugh made it to regional. Yeah. I mean, to lose those two kids, that's a, that's tough. But, I mean, their varsity lineup includes Maxwell Summers, Lucas Graham, Gage Thomas, Jace Rentschler, and um, Charles Warpenberg. Graham and Warpenberg are the only two back from last year. Um, they're at North Miami today at Peru, Peru, Peru Municipal, and they host North Judson on Monday. Yep. So I just wanted to give a shout-out to Coach Rentschler and his team. Um, track, again... I guess we're going to see this about all the track teams in the area. We just don't know because the weather's been terrible. Yeah, this is the most track cancellations I've seen. Yeah. I mean, we, we normally see the track push through, but there's been a lot of cancellations even on the track side of things. Yeah, Cass County meet us tomorrow. Yeah. So hopefully we'll find out a little bit more about um, what's going on there. And then Cass has a meet at McConaughey on Tuesday. All right. Let's take another quick break here. When we come back, we'll talk about the Culver Cavaliers here on Talking Sports with Val. 
Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels. From coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car, Mike Anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience. Not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to health care needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible. It should be customized to patient needs. It should strive for better health outcomes. It should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide the pharmacy care you deserve. Fulton County REMC is proud to offer the Operation Roundup Charitable Giving Program. Through Operation Roundup, Fulton County REMC is able to give to local organizations and communities by simply rounding up your monthly bill and donating the change. Since its inception, Operation Roundup has generated over 50 million in charitable donations throughout 260 electric cooperatives. To learn more about this great program, visit www.fultoncountyremc.com or call in at 574-223-3156. Steve Moore Agency is now offering an app to make viewing your policies, make payments, and file claims so much easier and convenient. You can download Steve Moore's Insurance Agent app from the Google Play Store or the App Store. Just search up Insurance Agent and look for the blue app with the large eye. If you want to know more about our services, you can call us at 574-223-3010 or visit us online at stevemoreagency.com. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val. Let's talk some Culver Cavaliers. Val, and uh, start off with the softball team. Softball team is 2-5 and five overall. They're 0-1 in conference play. The one conference game was that game against Caston, which was like, what, three weeks ago? Seems like, like it, it was yeah. forever ago, yeah. so... They've got a whole bunch of conference games coming up in rapid succession. Um, the one key loss recently was that 17 to nothing loss to Westville in five innings on Wednesday because they had to face Kirsten Vargas. We saw Vargas on the basketball court uh, when they played Argus in the sectional, but she's a really good softball pitcher too. Okay. And so they lost to that one. So they, uh, I know uh, Coach Overmeyer didn't like some of the errors in that game either, so they're going to have to clean up their game a little bit. Uh, in order to be a little more competitive if they wind up facing Westville again. They've got North White today, they've got Pioneer on Thursday, and then they've got LaVille next Friday. Uh, that LaVille game looks like could be a, a very winnable game. Um, the, cast, the Culver baseball team is 1-6-1 and one overall. They're 0-5 in the conference team. 1-6-1, and one, they had a tie. Yes, they had a tie, and that tie was against Marquette Catholic. It was a 4-4 four to four game um, a couple, about a week and a half ago. That game was tied 4-4 four to four after seven innings, and then darkness set in, and Marquette Catholic School doesn't have lights, hmm. so they just stop it there. But, again, that's kind of a key because Marquette Catholic won their sectional last year. So if Culver can hang with Marquette Catholic, you can think you kind of think they can hang with most anybody else in their sectional, but the bottom line is they're 1-6-1, and one, and they only scored 12 runs in eight games. They've got to get the hitting going. Um, you know, they lost a doubleheader to Knox. They lost to Winnemac 6 to nothing. They ran into a really good pitcher in Wensler from Winnemac. But, again, um, it's really more the offense that's the problem. The, the pitching, I think, has been pretty pretty solid. But, again, to be able to compete with the best teams, they've got to find a way to get to put some runs up on the board. They have another, you know, they have the second game of the set against Winnemac. That'll be tonight at Culver. And then uh, then they started a two-game set with Pioneer. Uh, home with Pioneer Monday, at Pioneer Tuesday. And then at Elkhart Christian on Thursday. So that'll be, uh, we'll see how they do. Obviously, going to have to face Braden Erickson in one of those Pioneer games, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, boys golf, just a one-person team with Alex Stacy, so we don't have a whole lot of information. Um, track team, they, uh, again, this team has been, again, with the weather has been so bad, they just haven't had many meets. They go to LaVille for the Lancer Relays tonight. John Glenn and Westville are part of that, so it's a four-team meet. Then at Culver Academy with Knox on Wednesday, at Triton with Winnemac on Thursday, and then they're at the Rippy Invite on Friday. So they now all of a sudden they have all these meets coming up. So hopefully the weather will be good. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Pioneer, let's talk Pioneer. Yeah. Uh, their softball team is 11 and 2 overall, 4-0 in the conference. What a let's let's go to the most recent game first. 
What a win over North Judson last night. Yeah. Down 10 to nothing in the third inning, and they came back to win yeah. 13 to 11. Yeah, pretty amazing. They're digging themselves into a, a big hole, but uh, able to come back and find a way Which to get that win. Which is weird because the, their pattern had been the opposite, where they had taken big leads yeah. and then struggled to, and kind of had these lapses in focus in the middle innings of games. But what a comeback. I mean, they've also got wins over North White. They beat Delphi. They had that really nice win over Winnemac 5 to 1. They beat Triton. Beat Faith Christian by ten run roll, which was impressive. Beat Laville. Um, they had that lost to Plymouth, lost a nail biter seven to six to Plymouth. Plymouth much improved, one of the best team, one of the most improved teams in our area. Okay. Bounced back, beat Whiting by ten run roll, beat Frontier twenty to four, and then of course that North Judson game. Uh, they play Elwood today. Elwood struggling a little bit this year, just two and six on the season. Mm-hmm. Sounds like the the Panthers are kind of getting some contributions from uh, from everybody. I mean, they're 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 hitting and. Uh, Lois Layer obviously in the circle is doing a really good job, but they've been getting uh, contributions from uh, three, a lot of everybody. All three freshmen. It's not just Layer; it's also Ava Ott and uh, Kennel. Uh-huh. Uh, Addison Kennel's been hitting. Uh, Emma Sells has been, you know, uh, she gets on base two or three times every game. It seems like Kylie Attinger is just so hard to keep off the base with her slapping. Um, Yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. Ava, Ava BC's really stepped up as well this year. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be really interesting. Obviously, you know, not only for conference play, but obviously we'll see them here at Rochester at Fansler for sectional. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're going to be a hard out. Right. One of their two losses, though, was to Lewis Cass, who mm-hmm. they could see in the sectional and who yeah. beat them in last year's sectional final. Yeah, yeah. So we had a home with Elwood today at, at Argus on Monday, home with Knox in a conference game on Tuesday. They'll get Barnes, so we'll see how they do against a really good pitcher. And then at Culver on Thursday, and then at then they go to the Twin Lakes Invite next weekend, and uh, who will be one of the three teams they play? New Prairie, defending the Class Three A state champion. Wow. Yeah. So. And they're they're doing just as good this year. Yeah, and they got yeah. a game with Griffith in there too, so I think that'll be a pretty solid opponent. Yeah. Um, Pioneer baseball four and six overall, two and three in the conference. Uh, you know they had the doubleheader sweep at West Central. They split a two game set with Winnemac, had that great comeback. Then they lost to Rochester that we had. Um, then they lost a doubleheader to, again, a really good LaVille team, 10-3 to and then 2-1. Two 2-1 to one. Two to one was the game that Erickson started. He had 11 Ks against a really good lineup yeah. and suffered a tough loss. And then uh, came back, but they came back and beat the Fr- Knox in the first game of the two-game set last night, winning 7-2, to two, and Braden Erickson had 14 Ks in that game. Hmm. Only allowed three hits. Uh, they complete the two-game set at Knox tonight. Uh, then they're at Clinton Central tomorrow. That's a makeup game. Uh, then at Culver on Monday, home with Culver on Tuesday, and then home with a very good Peru team on Thursday. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm really looking forward to see how they do against Peru, uh, who's just been having a great year. Mm-hmm. Uh, boys golf. Their lineup consists of Micah Rands, Brady Price, uh, Ivan Reyes, who's just a freshman, uh, Cole Franklin, and Tate Smith. Nine kids came out for golf for Coach Rands and uh, the Panthers. So that's a good sign. Uh, track. Uh, you know. I, this goes back a couple weeks. I want to give a shout out to the four by eight, four by eight hundred boys relay team. Mm-hmm. They got invited to that Franklin Central Showcase. I mean, first of all, just to get invited to that's a great honor, and they finished in eighth place in that mm-hmm. and ran. Uh, they're under eight thirty already, which is great. Um, they, uh, they, I believe, they own the school record in that now as well. Yeah, so it's a really good relay. They're at the Cass County meet tomorrow. Uh, they got a three way home meet with North Judson and West Central on Tuesday, and then of course they got the Rippy invite next Friday, which is I know one they. You know, it's obviously a big meet for Pioneer, every, including the Cass County meet. Mm-hmm. But the Ripley invite's a big deal as well. I yeah, know. yeah. That so, it? Uh, yeah, that's it for Pioneer. Yeah. All right. All right, well, let's take another quick break here. And uh, when we come back, we will wrap things up with the uh, Tipping Valley Vikings and the Winnemac Warriors here on Talking Sports with Val. New Holland Rochester knows that farmers need equipment they can trust and rely on. That's why for over 125 years, New Holland has been innovating to develop the best and most sustainable products available for our customers. Check out our full fleet that includes our lineup of small compact tractors online at www.NewHollandRochester.com or stop in at one of our locations in Rochester or Logansport to see how we can serve you. Rochester Ford is your go-to for quality vehicles and automotive repairs. With our vast selection of vehicles to choose from, we're sure to put you behind the wheel of your dream car without compromising your bank account. And with every vehicle we sell, we offer a free lifetime oil change policy to be sure that your ride stays in tip-top shape even after you leave our lot. 
Come see us today at 119 East 4th Street, Rochester, or visit us online at rochesterfordonline.com. Stop on into Giretti's Place for breakfast, lunch, or to get your day started with a cup of coffee from our signature coffee bar. Located at 701 Main Street, Giretti's Place is the perfect spot for a bite to eat in downtown Rochester. Come on by Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. and on Saturday from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. To see a full menu, visit us at www.girettisplace.com or call us at 574-223-7101. Looking for a better way to incentivize your staff or provide them with custom apparel to boost morale? Allow the Winning Edge to set you up with a custom edge store tailored to your business needs. Whether you need supplies for your fundraiser or shirts with your business logo on them, the Winning Edge can help you set up an online one-stop shop. Call today at 574-223-6090 or visit their website at www thewinningedgeathletics.com Welcome back here. and We're going to wrap things up talking about the Tipping Valley Vikings and the Winnemac Warriors here in our final segment of Talking Sports with Val. Uh, let's talk a little Valley softball, Val. Four and five on the year. You know, kind of ups and downs. I lost a heartbreaking one to nothing game to Knox on Wednesday. Dalen Buster had 14 strikeouts in that game, but Barnes was just a little bit better, and they scored their only run in the sixth inning. So... Uh, four and five on the year. Dalen also hitting the tar out of the ball, hitting 444, and she leads the team with 12 RBIs. Yeah. Uh, and of course, her and Michaela Costello, by far the two most experienced players on the team. We're trying to work in some freshmen, girls like Caitlin Threlkel, who's the catcher. Temperance Cottle is playing some first base. So, uh, Caitlin Manns is a is playing a lot more and playing a nice, doing a nice job in center field for them. Just uh, a, a lot of graduations last year, and yeah. uh, trying to put the pieces together there with right. the younger team and. Uh, really looking forward to getting a chance to see them uh, as they travel over to uh, Caston on Monday. Yeah, we hope. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, we'll see if Dalen winds up pitching against Caston. Yeah, I would hope so. To, yeah, to see, uh, ever face some Division One caliber hitters. See yeah, how she does against that team. Yeah, uh, the baseball team at Valley is two and nine. Uh, they lost to you know they had a, had a couple tournaments. They lost to John Glenn and Kankakee Valley at the John Glenn tournament, the uh, Reese Invitational. Uh, lost to Bremen. Lost to a heartbreaker to Northwood. Northwood scored in the bottom of the seventh to beat him three to two. Then they lost to Wawasee and DeKalb at the Wawasee tournament last uh, Saturday. So two and nine, but playing some tough teams. Um, they get Peru at home today. That's a makeup game. It was supposed to be played yesterday. It got pushed back today because Peru had to make up a conference game yesterday against Northfield. So we'll see. Obviously, they're not going to get uh, Rutger or Potts or any of North Peru's aces. So. We'll see if they, they if they can get their hitting going, but they're also going to, have to stabilize the pitching. Uh, they've been struggling to keep teams off the scoreboard, uh, and then Valley gets a home game with Argus on Tuesday, and then they're at North Miami on Thursday. So they get two really winnable games there uh, before the Zebras come to town next Friday. Yeah, another really young team for Valley, their right. baseball team. Right, and yeah, uh, Cam Manuel obviously is their ace, and he's going to be uh, pitching all the big games, but uh, uh, you know trying to work in some younger pitchers. But, you know, kids like Hunter Paxton and those guys. So, tennis team doing really well. They're having another really good year. Yeah. Beat Laville, beat Knox earlier this week. Beat Knox. Pretty. You know, had a nice win over Knox, four to one the other night. Um, you know, they're at the Concord Invite tomorrow. With the, she gets some good competition there. Uh, you know, they, they went to that Bremen tournament, lost only to Bremen. I uh, know shame there. Bremen's always good. Uh, you know, they're, they're three sing, those three singles players that Valley has. Kerrigan Callahan, Ella Sandbachen, and Sarah Finney. They're the heart and soul of this team, playing really good, playing really well again this year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we'll see, uh, uh, how, you know, how they keep going here. Yeah. Uh, boys golf um, had a really nice win over Mishawaka the other day, 164 to 183 on Mishawaka's home course. Eli Love and uh, Ethan Young both shot 39 and West Parker at a 40. Yeah, that's so this is a good team, and everybody was wondering what this team would be like without Greg Miller. Well, yeah, they miss Greg. Yeah, certainly you, you lose a Division One golfer, but boy, this is a solid program that Coach Parker is building. Nash Bouse at a forty six, and Thad Shambaugh at a fifty one. Mm -hmm. So this is a team that's going to uh, continue to put up low numbers. Yeah, one sixty four is a really good score, especially if it's not your home course. Yeah, and they get a home match with Wawasee on Wednesday over at Round Barn. Mm -hmm. Track seems to be uh, really having. Some uh, success. Yeah, I want to give they, a shout out. They can get 
meet. <laughs> I wanted to give a shout out to the the girls four by four hundred relay who won the Goshen relays in like four sixteen. Ava Smith, Betty Shepard, Hadley Wise, and Chesney Miller. That's a really good team. Hadley Wise having a really good freshman year on the track, of course. Uh, her dad's an assistant coach, so I mean she's, you know she she can get off the blocks, which is you know again that's it's tough for a lot of freshman athletes who maybe haven't been used to doing that before. But again, and you have two seniors on that team with Ava and Chesney. I saw they had uh, last night a good re- result where they broke the school record in the four by four relay. They did. You, you didn't see that? Yeah, no. yeah. They, uh, I believe they did. So uh, Chesney has her has her name on another uh, record at Valley. Okay. But uh, yeah, the four by four team, I believe, broke the school record. Okay. So they are at Rochester on Tuesday. Triton's going to be there as well as part of a three-way meet. We'll see if tri- uh, we'll see who if everybody sends out their best athletes. Uh, again, I, I don't know how not having a conference meet affects coaches, Coach Moriarty's lineup and how she puts out a lineup. But uh, always fun when those three teams get together. And then Winnemac. Let's talk Winnemac softball. They are five and five on the year. They're one and two in conference play. Um, they are at Argus today. They're at Delphi tomorrow. They host North Judson on Monday. They host Culver at their new uh, ballpark. They host Culver Academy on Tuesday and host Oregon Davis on Thursday. Yes, OD has a team. They played two games this year. So they'll have OD on the schedule coming up. And again, Chloe Rush and Adriana Hall, you know, they've got two really solid pitchers. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, uh, Corinne Combs, a really good catcher, a really good hitter on that team. And then Maggie Smith is Maggie Smith. You know, really solid at shortstop. So, uh, a team that's been, they, they're, it's not really an explosive offense, um, but again, they're always going to be competitive uh, with the pitching that they have. The Winnipeg baseball team is five and three overall. They are four and one in conference play. Had that really again. Brody Wensler has been the story: a one hitter against Triton, and then a one hitter against Culver. And uh, so he's been pitching. He's been just dominant on the mound. They're at Culver today, and then we talked about that big two-game series against Caston. They host Caston on Monday. They're at Caston on Tuesday. Caston is 3-2 and two as we speak, and Winamax 4-1, and one, and LaVille's 5-0. and oh. So, again, uh, big series. Every, every conference game is big, but Winamax right in the mix with Coach, Hen- Coach Hendricks' crew is right there. And, again, a, a fairly experienced team. And then they host Culver Academy on Wednesday. Um, the Winamax boys golf team. They're five right now for Coach Jeremy Shell, Brendan Hines, Talon Garner. Talon shot a 39 against Tri Township the other night in a win. Noah Garner, Will Byros, and Cooper Fulmer. That's the five that they're going with right now. Of course, Winnemac, the defending conference champions. So, uh, trying to we'll see how they do uh, moving forward. And then uh, track the Winnemac track team. They're at the Delphi Relays tomorrow, and they are at Rensselaer on Tuesday. Okay. Other than that, nothing's going on. But we should. Oh yeah, we should also note that uh, sectional alignments are coming out on Monday or Tuesday. So that's kind of, that's the last. That's the last thing we on my plate right now. Well, uh, Sunday. Oh yeah, and then Sunday. A little bit the, of a, a little bit of a thing. Softball going on and base, softball and baseball draws are on Sunday. Yeah. Softball draws at seven p.m. Eastern. The baseball draws at eight p.m. Eastern. Yeah. So, a little early. I think we got what two and a half weeks or so after the draw. Right. Softball sectionals don't start until May twentieth, and baseball sectionals start May twenty second. Yeah. So they do them about three weeks in advance for yeah. schools that had their end of the year events to. Maybe plan around. Yeah, yeah. So that's gonna that's gonna be really interesting. Obviously, you know, we talked about the the softball sectional is gonna be held at uh, Fansler for Rochester and Winnemac yeah. and and Pioneer will all be right. there for that. And Valley will travel to Kankakee Valley again for their sectional. That's a beautiful stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and then uh, Caston and will travel to North Miami again. Yeah, yeah. Which should be just a dynamite sectional because I think with Caston, West Central, and Southwood. Yeah, yeah. Southwood's having a really sectional. good season. Yeah, West Central's going to be a, a team to be reckoned with. They proved that this week, right? And then Westville will host a sectional again. They won the sectional on their home field last year. That's where Argus and Culver will travel, right? And then baseball wise, Wabash will host a sec- that two way sectional again with Rochester and Pioneer. Uh, Winnemac will travel to North Judson for their sectional. And Valley will travel to Newton Park uh, for their sectional again. New Prairie ranked number three in the state, so that New Prairie baseball team they are playing really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Argus and Culver will travel to t- Tri Township again. Yeah. And of course, Caston not hosting a baseball sectional this year. 
They're, they're traveling to uh, North White. North White. So next week uh, on RTC4.com, RTCTV4 in Rochester, we'll have uh, a couple of uh, Rochester games on Monday with uh, baseball and softball, both uh, hosting Wabash. Um, I believe i am got you going to Baseball Val, and then we'll have the softball as well. I'll be down at uh, Caston as uh, the Lady Comets take on uh, Tipkin Valley. Uh, we're going to plan on coverage of that uh, triple uh, three-way meet on Tuesday at uh, Rochester with Valley and Triton for some track coverage for you. And then uh, Rochester will be back in action with baseball and softball on Wednesday against McConaughey. Uh, I've got you going to baseball, and I'll go to softball. And then uh, Friday, uh, the uh, uh, Rochester Lady Zebras will be headed to Valley to uh, take on the Lady Vikings for some softball action. We'll be over there for that. Yeah. If the weather cooperates. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be That's... warmer. But will it be dry? Right, right. We've been trying to do as much coverage as we can, but uh, they've just been having to cancel games. We were looking forward to going to Valley this week with uh, that game with Pioneer on Tuesday. Of course, uh, Mother Nature uh, defeated both teams on that day. Mm -hmm. That was a uh, complete rain out for everybody. So um, I guess that'll do it for us. You got anything else? Talked out. I think we talked, got, talked, and talked out of sports. Talked out of, yeah. So uh, we'll have a lot of coverage for you coming up next week, and uh, we'll talk some more sports. Yep. All right. Thanks, everybody.